Good morning. Nice to have you with me today. I'm Jim Moore. This is Words of Encouragement, Day 91. Yeah, or Program 91. I, uh, I'm looking outside, and of course the sun is shining now. I don't need to say that every day now because it's, su- it's supposedly summer in Salem. All right. I'm looking at my beautiful wife, Linda, outside. Maybe I should. Oh, no, I better not. <laughs> I was going to turn it around and let you see her out there, but she probably would get mad at me because she does not <clears throat> like being captured <laughs> on um, on the video and so on. So anyway, yeah, uh, good to have you this morning. Uh, make a comment so I can, I can, st- there are little circles that come up at the top. So forgive my not knowing the way everything looks uh, on this and works, you know. I guess ignorance is bliss, but uh, there you are, Ashley. Bless you, Ashley. Love you. Um, So if you don't comment, I see the little tiny picture up at the top, but I don't know who it actually is. So uh, in there, I think that's Dean. Dean Reed, God bless you. Or I use caller Reed. Sorry, Dean. Sorry. You ever uh, know people from their youth and you still see them like you did you know, like 30, 40 years ago? Um, I, I do that all the time. Same thing with names. I'm sorry. Anyway, Dean, good to have you. And yes, there's Dean. And then um, Holly, bless you. And uh, yeah, good morning. <clears throat> so um, I want to start out right away this morning by inviting you to church, uh, because it has to do with my message this morning, and I I pray that you uh, continue on. Hi, Holly. God bless you. Um, <clears throat> my message this morning, if you saw the title at the top, is uh, called uh, Gathering, um, Gather Yourselves, and so I want to uh, invite you to come to the Salem House of Prayer uh, EGS. Uh, we have our meeting tonight at seven o'clock and we are open and uh, you can social distance uh, as you desire. We've got a separate room for people that uh, that want to be like really distanced. And and uh, and so uh, we're encouraging people to go ahead and follow their heart and do what they feel like they should do. But <clears throat> we'd really like to invite you to come and be a part, not so much because we are trying to build what we're doing, but we want to build you. And I'm just hearing from so many people that feel like, man, I just really need to, I need something from the Lord. I need to encounter the Lord. I need to come into his presence. I just need to come and hear the words of the Lord. And it's one thing to hear them over the internet like I'm doing right now. I mean, it's good. It's all good, right? But there is something, and I want to talk about that this morning. Um, actually, the Lord woke me up and spoke a verse to me again that uh, I didn't know <clears throat> what it said, but I love it when he does that because it it actually gives me a sense of confidence and courage that he's talking to me. And isn't that what we want? We want to hear the voice of the Lord. We want to know that uh, we're still in tune with God. Sometimes, you know, I, I hear stuff or I, I uh, whatever, and I go, yay, I'm still saved, you know. And uh, of course, I'm, I know I'm saved and joking and everything. But anyway, so EGS tonight, seven o'clock. And um, come expecting and expect the Lord to touch your heart. Expect the Lord to minister to your needs. We will be praying for people. And, uh, you know, you don't have to have hands laid on you. You can stand at a distance. We respect that. I really respect everybody's everybody's thing. I know that there's a lot of... Um, diversity uh, in what people feel some wear masks some don't some wear gloves some don't some wash their hands a lot some don't you know some want to be around people some don't I mean there's just all this stuff but we want to make provision for you we want to make it to where you can come and be with the Lord and so uh, anyway that's tonight 7 p.m. Not sure if we'll be broadcasting or not because we've got some uh, issues, but I I really want to encourage you to come out. Okay, uh, and also the link at the bottom of the page, take the time uh, to look at that. That's uh, by a a great man of God, I believe, named Rick Joyner, and uh, uh, something that I'm associated with. I'm I'm actually an ordained minister with the Morningstar Ministries in uh, North Carolina, and um, very much appreciate Rick and his stand on so many things. I found that 
Uh, he's been very accurate in the way he's perceived things and so on. I think I just saw Carrie K. Was that Carrie? Gotta say something, Carrie, because I see the again. I see those little tiny circles, and I barely see your face because it's so small. But I think that's who that was. Anyway, so um, watch the link. Some of you have been uh, seeing. There's a a link that's gone around uh, uh, called the White Coat uh, Gang. It's like a group of doctors talking about COVID and bringing to light some things that really, actually, very many people are saying, thousands of people. You don't have to agree with it, but you should watch it, and I believe that it's um, it's very powerful. And then, again, as always, uh, start a watch party, you know, for this video. Um, share it, uh, you know, comment, say something. It actually helps quite a bit when you do that. Like it, uh, pass it on to someone. Uh, had somebody yesterday, I think they said, I shared that with 10 people, and that's that's really good. And again, not so much for building this. Don't really care that much about that, but I do care about people hearing the gospel because the words of God, the gospel of Jesus, still brings life. And if you feel like you need an infusion of life, that's where you're going to get it. You're going to get it in his presence, and you're going to get it in his word. There's Carrie. Bless you. Bless you. It is Carrie Kay. Yay! All right. <clears throat> Carrie sent me a picture yesterday of me dedicating her when I was a kid. I looked at the picture of myself and I'm like, oh my gosh, who is that little boy holding that baby? All right, so time goes on. So Ron, bless you. Good to see you. Um, so the Lord, again, he, he woke me this morning and he spoke to me about uh, a, a very kind of a remote passage for me. Uh, do you ever do that? Do you ever wonder some of these passages that you just like never look at anymore? And it's like, what in the world? Well, um, and we in the body of Christ, I don't want to be critical here at all, but we tend to uh, sometimes kind of get on a, a tangent about certain things and we begin to unintentionally, we're trying to correct a right or wrong. And so we unintentionally go overboard. One of the things that I think we've done is we kind of diminished the uh, the Old Testament prophets so much that we kind of don't even want to go there and look at them. Well, those are those negative guys. And I, I, was, I was saying to someone the other day, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You do believe they were a prophet? Right? Oh, yes, I believe they were a prophet. You believe that their scripture was the word of God? Oh, yes. And, well, and then why, are we, why do we denigrate them? Why do we speak bad? Why do we say they're, we don't want to be like those guys are all, all negative, you know? No, 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 wait a minute. They were the mouthpiece of God for their day. You know, they, we need to honor, you're going to meet them one day. You're going to meet Zephaniah and you're going to meet Isaiah and you're going to meet those guys. And, and you might be a little embarrassed if you spend a lot of time demeaning who they were. <laughs> I'm just saying, those are real guys. And, uh, you know, some of the guys that spoke the harshest were actually the most tenderhearted. Jeremiah is a great example. Uh, Jeremiah was a guy who spoke some of the strongest stuff in the, in the scripture, and yet he was really, it was called the weeping prophet. You know, I believe that he was a very tender, he was a young man in his 20s. Anyway, so we should honor the fact that these were men of God and they were speaking the words of God and they may have had a personality quirk, but we really don't know because we weren't there. Anyway, so Zephaniah is one of those books. Like Zephaniah. You know, I don't know that I could quote a single scripture out of the book of Zephaniah. I mean, maybe you couldn't either. Raise your hand if you could. But when he spoke to me, he said, Zephaniah 3.17, I was like, wow, okay. And so when I first looked at it, I actually saw verse 2. So I'm going to read those a uh, couple of those passages. And I want you to hang out with me because I believe that God has a very important message for you today. And I just need your heart to be open to it and tender. Sometimes our circumstances and our belief systems actually prevent us from hearing what the Lord wants to say to us. The prophets are a great example of that. They kind of, you know, well, this is my life and this is my experience and you don't understand. And so, so all of those things come together to where when the word of the Lord comes and the Lord says, hey, this is what I'm saying, not what you're saying, but what I'm saying. It's like w there's this wallop and we can't hear it. And Jesus was always saying, you got to have ears to hear. All right. So Lord, speak to our hearts today. Pray God, uh, overwhelm us with your presence and your glory. We just want to hear your voice today. And I pray that the words that come out, Lord, will strengthen your people today and help them to do your will and to be more perfectly aligned with who you are and have joy. 
In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's look at this. I'm excited because this is such an obscure scripture for me. I just, I really felt like he opened uh, some things up to me. So uh, we're talking about uh, gather yourselves and we're talking about the God who gathers. Have you ever thought of God being someone who gathers? You know, it's amazing to me as I was searching this out this morning, how many times it talks about God gathering. He's a gatherer and that's, that's kind of cool. And so let's read uh, Zephaniah chapter two, just the first verse. Gather yourselves together, comma, and then it says, yes, I really mean that. <laughs> Sometimes I read the Bible and it just I just laugh. Other times I cry, but this time I'm laughing. He says, uh, it's almost like he's talking to us today. Gather yourselves together. Yes, I mean it for sure. No, no, no. Excuse, you know. Check the box, check the box. Nope, nope, nope. We're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to. Some of you, I'm going to lose you right here, right? Okay. Gather yourselves together. Yes. Gather together. He says it twice. Now, Holy Spirit wrote this. You know, use Zephaniah as a man. Whenever God repeats himself, remember this principle. Every time that the Lord repeats himself in the scripture, it's not because he needed some space to think of something else to say. Like, we'll go... Uh, you know, there was an old radio program I used to listen to in Seattle, and they would they call it was called the Um Ah Game. Okay, the Um Ah Game, and uh, so they try to teach you in media: don't go um, you're speaking, speaking ah, uh, you're speaking, speaking um. In other words, you know, don't don't use um and ah as filler words. Well, Jesus never uses filler words. If he says barely. Verily, he says it twice or repeats himself. It's because he's saying, hey, tr really, really, I'm saying this for your sake. I am giving a double emphasis so that you don't discount what I'm about to tell you. Okay, gather yourselves together. Yes, gather yourselves together. So that's really three things. He said, gather, I mean it, gather, okay? And then flip over to chapter 3, verse 17. That's really where, see, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm still licking my fingers. All right, but I'm not afraid. All right, <clears throat> Verse number uh, 17. Actually, let me read 16 too, because um, whenever I read Jerusalem, of course, I always read it, Jerusalem, the, the city of God, but then I think of Salem. I live in Salem. I don't know where you live, but I, I like to think of the, the city as my city. How does this apply to my city? And so Salem is actually an abbreviated form of Jerusalem. It's found in the scripture, Psalm 76, a couple other places. Actually, New Testament to Book of Hebrews. So when he's talking to Jerusalem, sometimes I apply this to my own city, and you can too, or to your own life. So it says, sing, oh, oh wait a minute, that's verse, uh, well, let's just read it, verse 14. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your judgments. He's cast out your... Okay, let's get down. Verse 16. In that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, Salem, do not fear. Okay, here's the word of the Lord for you. Number one, don't be afraid. You got to fight fear. You have, fear is an enemy. Okay, fear is an enemy. The only thing we are... I mean, it's like, who gave you permission to be afraid? Uh, I, you know, somebody said that once. I love it. Who, gave, who said you could be afraid? Who said you could be afraid? Did your God tell you you could be afraid? No. He said, I only want you to fear the Lord trust the Lord, and so on. So he says, do not be afraid. Let not your hands be weak. So fear is something that's on the inside, hands something on the outside. What you do will be a consequence or a result of what you feel or believe or whatever in your heart. So if you're fearful, you're going to do the wrong thing. Again, Rick Joyner, the guys whose link I put on today, heard a phrase from him. I don't know if he made it up, but he said this word. He said, fear will always cause you to do the wrong thing. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, don't be afraid and don't let your hands be weak. In other words, if you're fearful, your hands will be weak. So if you feel weak and you feel like your life is on pause, I know so many Christians, it's like their life is on pause right now. And it doesn't need to be that. I'm here to tell you, I want to give you a word of the Lord today. You do not have to have your life on pause. Okay, you can hit the unpause button and you begin to move forward today. But you've got to conquer fear. You say, well, we've got all these restrictions. Now, wait a minute. Who's restricting you, okay? You are answerable to the Lord. Now, if you really feel like God is telling you to, to you know, close to yourself in your house and, you know, just do all, then, then you must be obedient to the Lord. But you need to ask yourself, there's so many people today that say, you know, in my heart, I feel like things shifted a while back and it really is not. And yet the media keeps talking about how horrible and terrible and really Really, it's not. I'm telling you in my spirit, I know it's not. Okay, so anyway, 
Fear will cause your hands to be weak. There's the point. All right, verse number 17, it says, uh, the Lord your God in your midst. Now, <clears throat> I want you to think of the word midst, M-I-D-S-T, because it's a Jesus word. It's something that the Lord Jesus said. All right, what did Jesus say? And this is one of the scriptures I've got listed up there. I believe it's Matthew 18, 20. If I have time, I'll get to it. But Jesus said that, um, he said, as when two or three of you, what? You know the word, right? It's the word we're talking about. Gather, gather. God is gathering God. And yet in Zephaniah, says, no, you have to gather. We have to cooperate. Even though he might be trying to gather us, okay, you have to say yes to it. Okay, Jesus said, when two or three of you are gathered together in my name, I am there. Listen, there is something that happens when we gather that will not happen any other way. There's something when you're alone that will not happen any other way. God never intended you to have one or the other. He intended you to have both. That's why he so ferociously wrote through the Apostle Paul. It says, do not, do not. Well, yeah, but you don't understand my situation. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Do not forsake the gathering of yourself together. It is Satan that does not want God's people to gather together, not God. And, you know, temporarily there are times, you know, we get sick or there are times, you know, a pandemic just happens to break out in the earth or whatever. You know, you're out of town, whatever. Okay, that's supposed to be temporary. It's time to gather. I'm telling you today, I'm prophesying to you today, it is time for you to gather again with the family of God. And you know what, honey? It's not just about you. It is also about what you bring to the table. See, sometimes we, and I know a lot of people that do this, I'm not trying to be critical, but they like to go to the big church and kind of just kind of be anonymous and stuff. You know what that is? That's really all about you. That's about you going and seeing what I can get. Well, that's about what I can get from the, well, here's what I got from the service. Okay, what about what you bring? You see, when we do that, we're not really gathering as a family. We, you know, I'm not against big churches. That's not what I mean. But I, I am against that kind of, now, as a believer, as a, as a person that doesn't know the Lord, I get coming in and just wanting to be anonymous. That's totally fine. But, but we're supposed to be a family, the family of God. We actually were, were, were kind of commanded. Uh, I'd say I'm losing people. We were kind of commanded. <laughs> I know this stuff. It's like, no, 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 that can't be true. No, it is true. You know, we are called brother and sister. Isn't that right? Don't we call each other brother and sister? I know that's a little old-fashioned, archaic in some people's mind. But it is nevertheless, God intends us to be a family. And so when you come, you don't just come to receive. You come to bring. You come to give. You come to encourage. Forsake not the assembling of yourself together, the gathering of yourself together, as the matter of some is. I guess it's always been that way. And so much the more, so much more. In other words, God says you need to have a mindset of increasing how often you gather together as you see the day of the Lord approaching. Okay, we, We're approaching the coming of Jesus, right? I don't know, it's 100 years from now, 20 years, 10 years, 20 days. I don't know. I don't really even care. All I know is that I, every day we're approaching his coming. And one of the commandments, it's a commandment of the last days is that we do not for any reason, you know, forsake gathering ourselves together. And then the Lord Jesus said that. What did he say? I'm giving you all my scriptures before I read them. Maybe maybe I'm going to run out of time. Jesus said how often he wept over Jerusalem, right? Anybody remember this? He wept over Jerusalem. And what did he say? He said, oh, Jerusalem, Salem, Salem, how often would I have gathered you together? How often would I have gathered you together? God is a gatherer. That's what shepherds do. They gather. They bring the sheep together in a fold. Yes, they go out and they do their own thing. Yes, that has to, but there is a gathering. There is something that happens when you gather that will not happen any other way. And you're missing that if you, you know, or we, if we don't do that. So, all right, so let's go back to Zephaniah chapter number 17. Is this challenging you? I can feel it in my spirit. I can always feel what it is. Okay, the Lord your God in your midst, in your midst. Now, Jesus said, when two or three are to gather together, I am in the midst, okay, in the middle. Midst is an old-fashioned word that means middle, okay? So he says, the Lord, now this, this, hold on with me. This passage here often is given in context to individuality. Okay, so we often read this. This is going to be a scripture that you've heard many times, and maybe you're already reading it now. hope you have your Bible. Um, <clears throat> it says, the Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save, okay, salvation, 
Okay? One of the reasons we gather together is because people need to be saved. Let's not forget that. It's not just about believers. Okay? It's not just about so I can get, I can get, I can get. It's also about you bringing in your testimony of a changed life and somebody sitting in the back row just like I did, just like my mom brought me to church. And I sat in the back row and I didn't like it and I was mm, agitated a little bit, but yet I was curious and all that. Eventually, I got saved. The Lord in the midst of you saves Okay, let's not forget one of the reasons we gather is because he wants to save people. And don't, you know, well, my church, nobody ever gets saved, blah, 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 blah. Listen, you have a hundred excuses. I have a hundred excuses. Okay, none of them matter to God. None of them are valid enough to keep you from gathering. I guarantee it. Unless you are an invalid in bed and you simply can't get out, then you ought to be calling your family to come pray for you so you have enough strength to do it. Amen. Fear is not enough, good enough reason. The law. Okay, we always say, well, we want to obey the law until we break the commandments of God. I'm telling you, this is a commandment of God. This is a big issue to me. I, I submitted to, you know, some of the stuff. I don't want to go down this path because I, could, I can go on a, on a little bit of a rave myself here. <laughs> but there comes a time when they say you can't sing in church. When they say you can't uh, gather, and it's just not not for legitimate, and trying to make it look legitimate, trying to you need to watch the link, trying to make it look like, you know, everybody's gonna die if you do this. No, it's not true. I'm telling you, it's not true. Anyway, all right. So I'm saying there are times that it's legitimate, but believe me, God wants us to come together. So He says, here's what God will do in the midst of you. So I need to get back. He says He will save. He will actually. It says. Four things that God will do, okay? Are you ready? One, two, three, four. In the midst of you, when you're gathered together, okay? It says that the Lord uh, in the midst will save. Actually, it says the mighty one. In other words, he's mighty to do all these things. Number one, he'll save. Number two, he will rejoice over you with glad. Let me read it. He'll rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Okay, you've all heard that scripture, right? The Lord rejoices over us. He sings over us. He dances over us. All, all really good. You know, would you normally get that verse quoted to you is in the context of you personally as an individual, not as a group. I'm, I'm, and it applies. I think it applies both ways, obviously. I think God, you know, sings over us in the nighttime. I totally believe that. But this scripture is, is saying these verses in the context of gathering, in the context of gathering, Okay. The Lord your God in the midst of you. He's going to do some things. He's going to save. Number two, he says he's going to rejoice. Think of it. We're gathered together rejoicing. He's rejoicing with us. Have you ever thought of that? We're gathering together, you know, doing our best to, to give our testimony of salvation so somebody will accept the Lord. He's doing that with us. Okay, he's doing it in partnership with us. And what does it say? Then it says he will quiet you in his love. Is there anything in the world that helps you more than to know, I mean, what would it change your day today if the Lord appeared to you for a second and said, hey, I just want you to know I love you. I had a dream once where the Lord came right up in my face, right up in my face. And I saw his, he had blue eyes. He had these beautiful eyes and he was smiling really big at me. Because I prayed and I'd say, Lord, I need to know what you think about me because I wasn't very happy with myself and the Lord appeared to me. And I, from that one glance of him smiling and looking at me, I knew everything. I knew he loved me. Oh my gosh, just for the Lord to come to you today and say, put his hands on your shoulders and say, listen, I care about you. I love you. I'm fighting with you. I'm not angry with you. I am in the boat with you and you and I are going somewhere. He says, I will quiet you or he will quiet you, give you peace. Okay. Some of many people's hearts are not quiet right now. They're anxious. And you know what? There's a lot of reasons for that. There's a lot of junk going on in the world. And people are wondering, what's going to happen a couple months from now? What's going to happen before the elections? What's going to happen once the elections happen? It seems like no matter who wins or doesn't win, somebody's going to get really, really mad. I mean, there's a lot of things that would cause your heart to be at unrest. And the Lord, when he comes along, I, you know, I've heard, as people said, I've said it myself, I think he could walk through hell if Jesus was next to you. Yeah? He'll quiet you with his love, but he's doing this in the context of the gathering. You know, Satan doesn't want us to gather because there are things God does when we come together. Okay? 
We encourage one another. All right, and that's what it says. It says, don't, uh, you know, we should come together to encourage one another and not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Hopefully, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, it says, he'll quiet you with his love. And then the last thing, he will rejoice over you with singing. Can you imagine the Lord in the midst of a congregation coming over to you and just singing over you? And <laughs> Yeah, it's no big deal if we don't go to church. No, it's no big deal. No big deal. No, it is a big deal. That's what the enemy wants to tell you, okay? There's got to come a time. You know, I talked to a pastor yesterday. It just broke my heart. He was talking about all the pastors he knows that are quitting. They're resigning. And you know why they're resigning? Because their people are so afraid to come back to the house of God. You know, even with all kinds of stringent uh, social distancing protocol, they're still not coming. They're scared to death. Listen, that's demonic. I want to go on record to say that's demonic. That is not the Lord. You do not, your life is not subject to a virus or any sickness for that matter. You are subject to the well being and health of Jesus Christ. He is the one that's guarding your life. You know what? If you go, you go. <laughs> I don't mean to, mean to be savoir faire about it, but it's true. You know, we need to understand that our life is in the hands of God. We don't want to be stupid. We don't want to be foolish, but our life is in His hands. Okay, let's jump to the next verse. So, um, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, you know what? I forgot verse 18. I, I read verse 17, but I forgot verse 18. Let me read that. Can I read that for you real quick? It says, I, this is the Lord. This is God. This is the God who gathers. Now, remember, in verse 1 of chapter 2, he says, gather yourselves, right? What did, what did he mean? He's saying, no, you got to do it. You have to do it, okay? So that provoking, he's saying, I will gather, gather yourselves. Are you getting that? I will gather, gather yourselves. I will gather, gather yourselves. In other words, that provoking that you keep feeling to want to gather, that's God. That's not just you, okay? If, if you believe it's just you, you'll just keep putting it off and putting it off. And well, I can't today and I don't feel good today. And, you know, I'm really this and I'm really that and blah, 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 blah. When you don't understand it, it is him provoking, trying to gather you. You see, God, you know, there is something to the whole thing that God is a gentleman. I've seen God not be a gentleman. I have. I've seen God do some pretty rough people, things to people to get them to, to, to obey or to, you know, to get their attention. You know, I have. And, you know, there's lots of times in the scripture, too. I've got some, a whole lot of Bible to, to back that up. So he does do. But I do think, for the most part, God really is a gentleman. He's not, he's not going to come beat you over the head or just, you know, do some really radical things. But he hit the voice of the Holy Spirit. So I, I feel like one of the things the Lord showed me this morning is there's a lot of people out there. You're watching right now and you're feeling the need to do this, to gather. And yet something is hindering you. And part of that hindrance is you believe that's just your desire. And God wants you to know it's not just your desire. It's his. He's the gathering God. He's the God that says, how often would I have gathered you? How often, Jesus said, Jesus said this, would I, Jesus, have gathered you? I would have gathered you, but you wouldn't do it. See, there's got to be this cooperation there. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1, the first verse we read, gather yourselves. Chapter 3, verse 18, he says, I will gather. In other words, he says, I'm the one that's trying to get you to come. It's not just you. Because if you just think it's you, then you're going to weigh it up against all the pros and cons and how much you get out of it or don't get out of it. You know what? We need to shift our mindset. Okay, number one, God is the gatherer. He's the one that's you know trying to gather. It. Number two, there are a lot of people who need something. The same way I need something, I've got some. You may not think that your little life has much to give to anybody, but trust me, just your behind sitting in that chair. Okay, don't want to be crass. Just you being there in that assembly speaks volumes. Okay, just seeing your face. One of the things the enemy wants to convince you is you really don't matter. Your presence doesn't matter. Oh, honey, let me tell you, it matters way more. There's always a circle of people around you that are looking to you, looking for you to be there. Not just to say you love them. And, you know, it's kind of like on your birthday, you know, it used to be people would come and, you know, they'd give you a present. Now they just text a quick, you know, 10 second, hello, happy birthday, and we're done with it. Listen. This whole, you know, socially, uh, you know, somebody in our uh, little group at the house prayer the other day, I don't want to ramble here, but they, they said, we're not socially distancing, we're physically distancing. 
And I'm not even doing very well at that because I'm a hugger. I'm liable to hug you. I'll ask you first. I'll try to remember. Okay, but he's, this person was Peter, Peter, my friend, uh, Peter Carlson. He says, we're physically dis. We're not socially because we are social creatures and God wants us together. He is the gatherer. All right, so let's read again. I will gather those. Look at this. This is so important. This is a really cool verse. Uh, that, uh, I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly. Oh, please look at that. Please look at that again. I hope you have your Bible. I will gather those. Okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to try to gather. I mean, some of you, I believe he is having me say this right now because he wants to confirm in your spirit. Yes, that's me who's trying to gather you. I will gather those who sorrow over what? Over COVID? No. Over their finances? No. Over their boyfriend? No. <laughs> What are they sorrowing after? Sorrowing after the appointed assembly. The assembling of ourselves together. And they're sorrowful about it because it's not happening. It says, I'm trying to gather those people together. I'm trying to bring them together. I am trying to gather those who are sorrowful over the appointed. Who appointed the assembly? God did. Not you, not your pastor. God appointed the assembly. Okay, we really need to get serious. God appointed this. The enemy is the one who doesn't. He wants to disappoint it. God wants to appoint it. So, so those who are feeling this weight in their heart about, I'm going to gather them together. And he says, um, who are among you to whom it's reproach. Look, uh, this, this is today. This is like written for 2020 right now. I'm getting passionate about this. Look at what it says. He says, I'm going to gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly to whom it's reproach. What, who's, what reproach? The reproach of the appointed assembly that's not happening. You got to look at this. You got to look at it 10 times maybe before you see it. To whom it's reproach is a burden. Are, do you feel the reproach of the church of Jesus Christ not gathering together? I am, I am feeling the glory on me right now. I am just getting the witness all over me. The fact that God's house is not gathering is a reproach. And you and I are playing into it. And it's time that you quit thinking about how convenient it is or isn't convenient or you feel like it or you don't and just go. Just go. Okay, I'm giving you a, a reason tonight. I, I, God forbid, I hope you don't think I'm saying all this so you'll come to, to, you know, my, you know, the Salem House of Prayer. You know, we don't call it a church because it's a multiple gathering of other churches, but you get what I'm saying. Okay, I'm, I'll give, I'm giving you an opportunity tonight. If you're, if you're within, you know, 100 miles of the sound of my voice, then you should come. You should come, 7 o'clock, you should come. Gather yourself together. And if not here, I mean, you've, you've got a church. Go to your church. Say, well, I don't have a church. Then come to mine. I, just do it. Do it. Find a way. Overcome your fear. Overcome all the lies Satan has told you. Overcome all the excuses and the reasons that the enemy has told you you can't do it. And just do it. All right. Okay. So, real quick here. What am I looking at time-wise? Oh, I'm, I'm past my time. I think I quoted all the scriptures <clears throat> that I wanted you to see. And I think I touched most of the uh, uh, most of the things that I wanted to to touch. Um, Luke thirteen thirty four, again Jesus said, "How often I would have gathered you? How often I would have? How many times I tried to gather you, but you wouldn't? There has to be cooperation. He's not going to break your arm." He said, "Well, if this and this and this happen, mm -mm. it usually doesn't happen that way." You know, often we're waiting for God to give us some sign or a wonder, and he's waiting for us to simply be obedient, all right? Is that too hard? I hope not. And then in Hebrews, it says, again, forsake not the assembly. I actually want to look at Hebrews real quick. I'm not, I promise I'm not going to read all this, but I feel like I left something out of this verse, and I, and I want to hit on it, and then I'll let you go. Promise, promise, promise. Hebrews 10, 25, it says, let, okay, this is so good, 10, 24, and 25, because it gives the motive for gathering together. Which, again, we tend to be self-centered, don't we? I know I do. It's about me. It's about how I feel. It's about what I want to get. Get, 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 get. So yesterday in my program, there are churches, I've been to them, where this thing has gotten so self-centered that people just go and just sit there. You ever done that? Just sit there. Sit during the worship, barely saying, mouth of words, yawn, okay? Listen to the preacher. They're 
deserting everything. I mean, it's not about, oh, I'm going to go and I'm going to bless my friends. I'm going to bless my family. Or if I'm a stranger, I'm going to go there and encourage in some way. And yes, I want to receive, but I'm hungry. I'm not just kind of sitting, daring God to come and get me, okay? So it says, and let us, verse number 24, and again, I'm talking to you. This is you. This is not your neighbor. If you're thinking about somebody else who needs to hear this, they probably do, but it's about you. It says, let us consider one another not you. Well, I'm trying to consider myself. You know, and that's what he says here. There's time for that for sure. But it says, let us consider one another. Think about one another. Think about going for another reason. Consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. People, God, people need you to come help stir up their love and good works. They do. I know the devil's told you you're unimportant and that you don't matter and that you're, that you're weak or you know, I don't know, ugly or, you know, whatever. All these stupid things the devil tells you. You're in bondage, you're weak, and blah, 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 blah. You know what? Go. Or then there's always this one. I don't want to be with a bunch of hypocrites. I love what one preacher said. He said, you know what? I'd rather go to church with him than go to hell with him. <laughs> you know, hypocrites are everywhere. All right, so consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. And do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. Here again, twice it says one another. This is not just about me. It's about what I bring. It's about me helping. And if you don't think you're helping anybody, you're being lied to. You're being lied to. And, and really, if you're in a place where you are just a bump on a pickle and you're, you're there and nobody knows, you know, nobody says boo or anything, then find another place. Find another place where you can be where you can have a family, where people who will love you in spite of your faults and who will challenge you in spite of your faults. Because, you know, we need that too. We don't need to be beat up and we don't need to be condemned, but we do need someone once in a while to go, hey, don't do that. That's not good for you. All right? So he says that you could stir up each other, exhorting each other so much so much more. Man, I just, ah, so much more. I wonder how many people have it as a goal in their life to assemble more often than they ever have. I wonder how many people are in actual obedience to that verse. Yeah? I wonder how many of us are have even thought about how that applies to us, to be in literal obedience to the command of the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul. Okay, it's still, as much as the word, it's of Jesus, I know that's hard for some of you, but... So much more. So much more. We're talking about the God who gathers. Okay? I, I want this to be an encouragement to you. You're going to probably have a struggle. Okay? I know some people, when they start heading towards their gathering of, of their, their spiritual community, they get stomach aches. They get, they, they're flat, their car, their tire goes flat. They start, I mean, you know, that's the enemy. Okay, come on. You've got to, there has to come a day that you realize that's the enemy. I remember when I was young, and I'll stop right here. So I was young in the Lord, and me and my brothers and sisters, we were all dope smoking, hard drinking, you know, sex, drug, and rock and roll. That's who we were. You know, I'm not proud of my past, but I'm proud of my Jesus who brought me out of it. Okay, that's who we were. We all got saved. We all started coming to church. And I remember my sister Shelly. God rest her soul. She's in heaven tonight. And she, I, I hope she's looking down and smiling on her brother. But I remember she went through a season where every single time, first it started on Sunday, every Sunday morning she, she did not feel good. I mean, consistently, or something would happen. You know, or her little son, Philip, my nephew, would get not, something, always something, always something. You know, wake up with this, wake up with that, I, you know, whatever. Somebody would call, hey, let's go to the beach. It didn't matter. It's just like every single Sunday. And, uh, but then she would typically make it to the Wednesday night meeting. So, you know, she felt pretty good about it. Well, as she kept submitting to that, after a while, the same thing would happen on Wednesday night. She'd be fine Monday morning. She'd be fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is this, you see what I'm saying? There has to come a time. Friend, listen to me. There has to come a time when you recognize what's really happening. This is really not about your family. This is not about you, your body. This is not about your, the gas for your car. This is about the enemy saying, I've got to keep them from gathering because they will encourage the people I'm trying to discourage. And God says, I 
how often I would have gathered you. I'm trying to gather you. I'm trying to gather you. I'm trying to gather. Those of you who are sorrowing over this fact that you're not gathering, I'm trying to tell you it's time. It's time. All right? Lord, I bless the people. I thank you for their patience and listening to me today. I'm asking you to encourage your hearts today. Let them decide. Okay, it's time. And give them the grace to go forward and jump over every wall, push through every obstacle, and say, I'm going to do this no matter what, in Jesus' name. I forgot to tell the rest of the story of my sister. So what happened was eventually one day she recognized this as something spiritual. I mean, there are natural things that happen once in a while, of course, but not all the time. And she finally had to make up her mind. She said, okay, here's what's going to happen. I am going to be in the house of the Lord every single time it's open, no matter what. I mean, unless I am just completely, you know, or if I'm out of town, okay, doesn't matter if, because there were times that she was out of gas and she would walk. I remember this. I did too, okay? She says, unless I am like vomiting <laughs> with a high temperature and in bed and cannot get out, or if I'm out of town, I'm going to be, I don't care how I feel about it. In other words, she's going to challenge her feelings and challenge her circumstances. Are you hearing that? Two things, her feelings and her circumstances. She says, I'm going to go. Now, considering all things right now, if you're sick and if you have a fever and you're all that, then you should probably stay home. That would be the safe thing to do. But we're not talking about that, are we? So she decided to do it. And you know what? Pretty soon, she stopped getting sick every Sunday morning. She stopped having all these things. Oh, the relatives coming over and there's somebody inviting her to a party and blah, blah, blah. She finally, when she made her stand, and this is what a lot of people don't realize. You have to make a stand. You have to make a decision. You know, not, well, I can't find the right church. I, I, the devil, the devil will give you a thousand reasons. You have to recognize it as the devil, okay? You do, and you have to challenge it. So I'm just encouraging. I'm, I'm still preaching, aren't I? <laughs> Love you guys. God bless you. Pray you have a great day. Would you do me a favor? Share this with five people. Can you share it with five people? If every one of you share, there's 14 people watching right now. If every one of you share it with five people, It'll make a difference in their life. All right. Love you guys. God bless you. Take time to look at the link after you share. God bless. Have a great day.